Around the corner are better times with better buddies. Cause we're living, living in the moment, the moment. So don't look back, it's a long, long road ahead. A long, long road ahead. Woo! Hello, and welcome back to Better Buddies. I'm I'm your host, RJ, and with us this week, we have Calvin. Hi. James. Hello. And surprise friend, John. Wow! Oh, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Got some kung fu kicks over here. Gotta get hype. Got the Batman, uh... Boom. Pow. <laughs> Smack. Pow. <laughs> oh, perfect. Our Better Buddies icebreaker this week, along the lines of larger-than-life heroes. Uh, Who is your favorite Greek god? Who is your favorite god out of the Greek pantheon? Because we're we're cool and use fancy words like pantheon. Mm. Pantheon. I think pantheon's a Roman term. Yeah. Is it a really? Mm. Oh, now he's a boy. Well... I think it's retroactively applied to the Greek ones, but oh, it is. it's probably Latin, yeah. Oh, it is Latin. Yeah, you're right. It True. Is Latin. Good point. Yeah. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. I no, I it's not. What? Oh, it's Greek. Etymology. Oh, it came from Greek and then wait, what? It what? came from Greek and then went to Latin. Oh. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so it's both. I I retract my statement. Statement. (laughs) (laughs) I I can go first unless somebody else has one. Go do it. I'm gonna say Dionysius um, for multiple reasons. Okay, Uh, the guy that couldn't drink wine or something is the guy. That's a guy who just drinks wine. Um, He's the god of wine. He's Uh, he's the god of wine and uh, parties and dolphins. uh, Festivals, <laughs> dolphins, um, Ritual I, I, madness. I like, madness. Yeah, I like him because he. So, like wine, I believe um, it wasn't. It wasn't just like uh, you know a drink in ancient Greece. It could be used as a symbol for like other like psychoactive stuff that they potentially used back then. <laughs> so that's why he's partially associated with madness. Is because that association was made with wine as well. Um, I think his story is interesting where he becomes, he's like a mortal, becomes a god, like he ascends to that standpoint. So I think that's pretty cool. It makes him one of the youngest ones in the pantheon, I think. Um, I also like him because uh, good old Freddie Nietzsche used uh, him as an example of like the sublime chaos of nature in a lot of his books. And he has a dynamic that emerges called the Apollonian, which is like structure, and then the Dionysian, which is like the chaotic. And you need both to kind of synthesize and make like art and human nature and stuff like that. So there's a lot of uh, things that I like about Dionysius. And uh, So it's not um, just because it's an excuse to drink. It's not just because it's an excuse to drink. It's because it's an excuse to drink, uh, take acid, and read Frederick Nietzsche. So, <laughs> sure. He was, he was born from the leg of Zeus. What? That's pretty cool. Yeah, his his mom was immortal and was tricked into making Zeus promise to show her his true form, which instantly burned her to a crisp. But he saved the fetal Dionysus, sewed him into his thigh until he was ready to be born, and that granted him his immortality. I mean, so it's like, yeah. Well, it's like, it wasn't... Uh, Athena, Athena was born. Was in his head because he was afraid she was going to yeah. kill him and overthrow him. So yeah, and and Zeus jerked off into the ocean, and that that's where uh, Aphrodite comes from. Yeah, I'm out of a clam. So Zeus is responsible for like three of his peers. He's responsible for a lot. He's responsible <laughs> almost all of them actually. <laughs> It's like it's like that meme that was getting passed around a while ago. Where it's did you guys ever see that? Where it's like all Greek mythology, and it's like Zeus. I'm gonna stick my dick in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh! Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, have you have you seen the the videos on YouTube? Like along came Zeus. Oh, what? 
But it's a it's a trend I've been seeing recently. I don't know if I'm just getting recommended them now, but it's like a bunch of um bunch of other Disney clips. Like in the Emperor's New Groove when Isma and Kronk get struck by lightning. It's like the lead up to that, and then it cuts away to Hercules where the fates are singing, and then along came Zeus. And then lightning <laughs> happens. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Oh no, it's not the fates, it's the muses. Yeah, the muses, yeah. sorry. There's multiple singers, yeah. Yeah. That's fucking that's great. <laughs> no long came Zeus. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, uh, John, do you wanna might... uh, James? Oh, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna continue know. to share now. I'm sorry, yeah. It's okay. Keep going. It's okay, you didn't know. John, do you wanna share yours then? <laughs> um I don't really have one. I'm gonna go with Kronos, because he like tried to eat all his kids. And that's oh. pretty metal. And then I was just going to say, that's pretty fucking metal, John. <laughs> Add respect. He's the first Lord one? Yeah. yeah. He's Jupiter, isn't he? Saturn. Uh, Zeus is Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. I think Kronos is Saturn. Yeah. One of the, the, yep, only, yep. the only Roman to Greek conversion I know is Hercules, because I'm pretty sure the Greek one was, was Heracles. I thought I think the it's the other way around, actually. The other way? Yeah. I think the Roman one was Heracles, yeah. No, I think the Greek one's Heracles. Yeah, that's what was I was it Roy? Oh, shit, okay. Oh, I thought you said Roman was Her- Heracles. Oh, whatever. Cool. Nice, Kronos. Kind of a kind of rude dad, but whatever, you're the god of time. You can just rewind it, right? That guy's pretty cool. What about you, Calvin? Uh... I don't really know. I'm on GreekMythology.com just browsing their gods. <laughs> That's Wait, why I picked well, the first yeah. one. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, really know. So you uh, uh, I'll go Hephaestus. Hephaestus oh. is classic. Hold the rug out from I, under me. Oh yeah, wait, RJ, you answer, and then I got like a sub question. Uh, this. Mine is also Hephaestus. Cause he's oh, like I said it first. You 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 said it first, but uh, I'm gonna jump on that <laughs> He he built all the coolest stuff and had like assistants and helpers and was an artificer, and base like as far as I'm uh, my understanding goes, he was ugly as hell. But the Greek <laughs> gods were like, "Hey, you build all our cool stuff, so we can't he was really also be too to Aphrodite." Yeah. She wasn't happy about that, though. <laughs> well, uh, maybe she should have caused problems. Got, I mean, that motherfucker got chucked down a mountain. That's partially why he's, like, crippled and shit. Like, didn't yeah. he get thrown up in the abyss? Cause he was Hera threw him out. <laughs> Jesus. Hera has the gall to lecture Zeus about being a good man. <laughs> 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 How dare you? Oh, this one's broken. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, oh, this one's not as pretty. Let's just, let's just drop it yeah. over here. Oh, oh wait, you God. can build all the cool weapons? Of course you could come back. Oh my god, you may oh you weren't supposed to live. Uh you can live in the mountain. Oh, isn't that fun? That's fun. <laughs> you can make my chairs. <laughs> <laughs> what was your sub question, so, James? I actually have two sub questions. One that's not related at all, and then one that is. So middle school, we all had to do the Greek uh, mythology presentation. Do you guys remember who you were? Hephaestus. Hephaestus. Because I was Orion. a ugly child. You were Orion? Okay, yeah. hell yeah. I do not remember. Damn. What about you, James? It was Hades. Were you Hades? Was Hades. Yes, I was. I could have sworn you were Apollo. <laughs> Are <No>. you Hades? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just might be. <laughs> uh, I, my second question was, is there any way without physical evidence to prove that someone has thought something first? Oh. No. Thought is an abstract concept, I would argue. But it still so happened, right? But if someone has thought, so, so for instance, with that Hephaestus thing, like if RJ had in his mind already, technically he got there first. Right? No, so, but uh, you're asking, but you have to bring in, you're bringing in time, which mm-hmm. is like a physical construct into an abstract construct. But, but thought still happens in time. It's a, it is an abstract concept, but it does happen in time. Someone can think something. Does it right. though? Okay, here's it's not here's, made real till it's vocalized. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's where I'm at on this. Yes, James, they do happen. Like we in our own heads can see them happen in a sequence, 
across time, but if there is no way to record that action, it doesn't matter. Is it just that it can't be recorded, or it just doesn't matter? Like, because... Uh, like, I, I don't know. I think that's an interesting... I, I agree, like, I do think thoughts, for the most part, happen out of time unless they're structured in some way, like speech or writing or asking a question. Um, but in this case, like, who got there first with the Hephaestus question? Would it be... The one that vocalizes. Yeah. We have to go with oh. the one that vocalizes because otherwise I could say, well, I had my answer yesterday when I wrote the question, but... There's no uh, evidence of it. Also, I mean, by... Oh, go ahead, Jeff. I mean, like, think of it like a business idea, right? Tons of people could have the same idea for a product, but the first one who gets it out to market and does it the best, like, is the one who got it, you know? Yeah. And trying to apply... the Just asking the question first always brings, again, it into a construct, like a physical construct. You see, but the thing is, like, I'm not asking about, uh, like, effectivity or s it's just who got there first. And mm. is there any way to prove without, like, without physical evidence so that no. somebody has... So The answer then would be no. I, yeah, because I don't think you can prove anything with is first without physical evidence. Like, n like beyond thought, what is, how can you prove something is first without empirical evidence of that? Faith. <laughs> i guess prove probably the, i shouldn't say prove like yeah yeah i don't know i think it's an interesting question okay um, so what you have to do is you have to think the thought and then take a picture of yourself holding today's newspaper and you mail it to yourself <laughs> to show that you have the thought what you have to do is you have to manifest today's newspaper and people have to watch it happen so that they know that just by the power of thought alone they're just gonna then they won't question it you basically be a living god already news don't fancy did that answer your question james <laughs> no but it's but well, okay so I, I think you yeah. i think we did i was looking for an answer just a debate all right. Well, I got something quick. This will be probably pretty fast. Can I do? I I ordered Jap or Japanese. I ordered Chinese food for dinner, and I saved my fortune cookie. Shall we see what my fortune is? Ooh, nice. All right. Fortune time. Get ready, All right. boys and girls. My fortune is. Do not let what you have. Wait, what? Do not. I can't even read. <laughs> do not let what you do not. Is this English? Do not. Do not oh, let what you do not part. have prevent you from using what you do have. Okay, it's okay. perfectly fine. Oh, yeah. That took me too long to read. Say that again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do not let what you do not have prevent you from using what you do have. Oh, That's good advice. Okay. Do not let your greed and jealousy distract you from the skills and uh, tools you already have at your disposal. Yeah. I don't know if it's even that. It's like... Don't let the end goal stop you from participating in the journey, you know? Oh, well, it's like, like don't let any, any perceived shortcomings influence your, like, desired outcome. No, that's, don't let that's, it... I like John's. Don't, don't let it intimidate you. You just gotta get started, you know? And do it. Like, go for it. Like, try I don't follow that advice, but that's what it's <laughs> saying. <laughs> Well, I mean, did the Buddha even follow his own advice? Is there any evidence of that? Prove it. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just writing. Someone else could have wrote that. We, we have no fucking idea. That's the whole point having, of Buddhism, isn't it? Imagine having video evidence of the Buddha. Do you know how crazy that would fucking be? It's called time travel. Yeah. That would be, like, insane. That would be well, the isn't, isn't the Dalai Lama a reincarnation of a Bodhisattva? He's, yes, but he's not the, like, Buddha Buddha. Like, the no, OG. Well, yeah. Because, yeah, he's just a Buddha. Buddha's yeah. a title. Well, technically, yeah, because technically anyone can be a Buddha. Yes. Anybody. It's, and, it's just Siddhartha is considered the historical Buddha. Mm -hmm. um, that's, like, maybe my second favorite religion other than, like, yeah, Shandy. Oh, Dalai so Lama know. is the Bodhisattva of compassion, and a Bodhisattva is Buddha that has chosen not to reach. He is like he has made it to enlightenment, but is choosing like not to. Was my understanding oh. of it so that he has stayed behind to um, help other people 
Seems a longer like a, path. Seems like a cop out, Tenzin. I don't know if the Dalai Lama listens to this podcast, but <laughs> asked in doubt. <laughs> so, I mean, it depends on your school of Buddhism, but is Buddhism actually religion? Because I maybe it was a misconception. Oh, jeez, James. <laughs> Flashbacks <laughs> to two years. <laughs> I thought it was a fl- more of a life philosophy over like it's a well, quote unquote religion. I could argue that technically Christianity is just as much as that. Like yeah. the, the the difference between Buddhism and most other religions is that it's decentralized. So there's no like actual church or figure. There are different sects, but there's no like set doctrine. There are religious texts, but there's no dogma. So it's essentially the. I mean, the whole point of Buddhism, like, is that you get to choose. Um, and it's it's kind of like the underlying principle of the faith is that. Everyone, the idea that everyone can attain enlightenment in their own time and in their own way. Um, so to try and set it in kind of a rigid doctrine, like I uh, just went, that enlightenment process. Like I, I believe, like, uh, like supposedly the Buddhist final words were "Be your own guiding light." Supposedly, mm. so that the, the that sums up pretty much the whole idea of the religion in a sense like technically speaking you could be a buddha and not even be a buddhist and you wouldn't know cool well it's because there is no self exactly your ego's fake man just trip a bunch and you'll find out (laughs) (laughs) or just think really hard you can find that out too that's basically what meditation is it's just kind of well it's not really thinking i guess it's more just like it it depends on what you do to meditate concentration yeah it's true it's like it's like intro and exo, exo spectrum at the same time. Spectrum, yeah. It's about sitting cross-legged, and then as soon as the monk across from you thinks you've thought something, they slap you. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be embarrassing. I get that's why like, that like happens in a form of like Zen Buddhism, according to one of my professors. I'm just gonna yeah, boot the head. Does and sound the slapping monk thought something though? So you yeah, get to no. slap them. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the teacher their job is not to they're not, not meditating right okay fair seems one-sided so well, technically if you if you attain enlightenment can you just engage in like whatever you want to do and i, I guess you so. technically supposedly <laughs> the buddha could fly <laughs> that's cool maybe that is enlightenment <laughs> Reeling, realizing you can do whatever you want yeah. so throwing yourself in the ground and missing yeah. yeah it's called orbiting <laughs> <laughs> He's got you there. <laughs> Let's move on to our uh, next segment, real quick. Uh, Better buddies recommend where we recommend a piece of media to enjoy. Uh, I'm going to start us off this week because Calvin gave us a little peek into his dinner habits. I had sushi Ooh. tonight. Oh, it was oh. so good. Oh, and that is my media to recommend is sushi because good gravy. It was. Mm. Wait, did you have sushi or sashimi? Sushi, I think. What was it? Uh, what's the difference? Uh, sushi <laughs> is the rice. That. Wait, no, what's sashimi? <laughs> sashimi is raw fish. I had the rice. Sushi can be cooked. It's not always yes. cooked. Yes, I, ha- I had sushi. Because there was some uh, fried tempura. Well, tempura is different than sushi. Well, man! <laughs> yeah, <hard. laughs> I assume you went to the Japanese place in town. Yes! What did you have? <laughs> uh, man. Sushi. <laughs> American definition. Dude, this is yeah, whatever. Hard. But yeah, one, one in particular, there was a... Um, there was a... I don't remember what it was called, but it was a like sweeter roll with some mango and it it's just very light and like sweet but not too sweet oh so you had the rolls okay yeah i just pictured the skyrim guard oh did somebody take your sweet sweet roll (laughs) (laughs) also can i just say that referring to a sushi as a uh form of media just Makes me picture like stuffing some raw fish into a CD player and plugging the headphones in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like picturing the opposite. Is that not what you do? 
I was picturing like a sushi roll with like the uh, the you know when televisions cut the signal and it's like all the colored bars. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> sushi roll but with like the colored bars like inside instead of me. What about That's those, amazing. What about the sushi rolls people do with like the way they've rolled it all up creates an image when you cut it? Oh, that's cool too. That's almost oh, as cool yeah. as the people who make like Jesus and their coffee foam or whatever. <laughs> oh, no, like latte, latte art. art. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's dope. Uh, who would like to go next? Recommend. We got one. Go for it, James. Um, this is going to be a bit out of the ballpark. It's still a cartoon, but it's not really what I've recommended before. Um, I've actually been watching the Harley Quinn animated Ooh. series. And I was a little skeptical. Um, it's one of those ones where it's like, oh, is it going to be like too heavy on the like, I'm a girl and I'm breaking up with the Joker and blah, blah, blah. I actually really well done. Um, I actually think it's pretty funny. Uh, the voice cast is really, really good. Um, it's like Kaylee Kuoko, Lake Bell, Tony Hale, um, Alan Tudyk, who voices Ooh. like the Joker and Clayface and almost like every other character in the show because he's <laughs> he's just very good at it. Um, <clears throat> I found it pretty enjoyable. I think I, I don't know how it would be for like a mainstay comic fan. Um, I'm approaching this as somebody who's a little more casual with that stuff. So um, it's definitely m more like humor based and less based in like the mythos of um the world uh but it's it's fun they do some fun stuff with it like um jim rash who is the dean in community voices um the riddler <laughs> and in the second season he uh they split gotham up and his section of gotham is riddler university so he's a dean nice. <laughs> it's like it's a nice little like oh that's funny okay that's cool I, yeah, um, I would recommend it. Like, watch the first couple episodes. It's probably not going to be for everyone. I totally get it. Like, it's one of those shows where it's it's kind of like, ah, like, yeah, I get it. Like, oh, you know, it's superheroes, but it's super gory, and they say fuck, and they also talk about, like, their personal relationship problems or whatever. But it's fun. There's even, like, a fun little subplot with, like, Poison Ivy, who is, like, best friends with Harley Quinn. Um, Poison Ivy hooks up with Kite Man, and Kite Man is, like, <laughs> the greatest yeah. character in the show. <laughs> he's, he's awesome. He's great. Um, I, I remember reading articles as the show was first coming out, like, Kite Man is just, he's such a, like, lovable dunce. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, he, he's, like, because you can see where they play him, um, they do play him as, like, oh, he's a guy who really wants, like, sex, but... You can see where they play him as like kind of creepy and sad, but he's uh, he's honestly played like very earnestly, and he's very like he's very like adorable. Like he asks Poison Ivy to marry him at like one point at like a very random inopportune moment. She's like, "No, we can talk about this later." And he's like, "Wasn't a no, nice." <laughs> 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 like, okay, that's funny. Like that, yeah. All right, it's endearing. So I'd say ch check it out. I would I recommend that. Awesome. Calvin and John, how are your panic searches going? Oh, I, I have one. I had one too, yeah. Oh, awesome. You can go first. No, I, you go. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a little bit of podcast betrayal here and recommend a different podcast. That's okay. So recently, and it's like, I got like an email from Spotify, just like giving me recommendations. They're like, hey, you might like this podcast. So I've been listening to Heavyweight, produced mm. by Gimlet. It's all about this guy, um, Jonathan Goldstein, like, talking with his friends and helping them resolve, like, thorny conflicts from their lives, and just, like, going back and resolving things from their past. And it's just it kind of, like, heavyweight. Heavyweight, okay. Yeah. Um, kind of warms your cold, dead 2020 heart, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, nah, it's really good. <clears throat> so. How long has it been around? Um, first episode aired September 23rd, 2016. Oh, that's pretty okay. good. Most recent one was on November 12th. There are only 35 so oh, far. Oh, wow. But it's really well produced. Like it's, How long are they on average? Um, about 40 minutes. 40 yeah. to 45. It's a pretty good, pretty good line. Yeah. Actually, 30 to 45. <laughs> pretty good for a commute. Yeah. For 35 days. 
<laughs> but uh, was there any episode that you connected with, like, <clears throat> in particular? Um, I'm only 10 in. Um, there's one. What's it called? James. <laughs> like, every episode is named after a person. <laughs> um, episode 6, James, is about um, Jonathan, the host, and two of his friends um, going to scatter his friend James's father's ashes on a golf course. Oh. And they, it's like this whole heist set up to get it to happen. So, <laughs> Okay. It just uh, walked I, through the whole process. <laughs> I felt a little guilty at first for laughing at the title of James, because we have James here. E. And then you said it was a whole heist set up to, to spread the ashes, and then I felt better again. Yeah. And it, like... So, the dad died, like, 16 years before they did it, so the guy just kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, oh... This is hard to do because, like, it's my dad, you know? Yeah. And he had the urn the whole time, so. But it also felt really good to, like, fulfill the last thing his dad asked of him. That's cool. Yeah, really cool show. And just a thought I just had about it, because you said there's only, like, 35 episodes, but they've been going for four years-ish now. Mm-hmm. There's about ten a year. It doesn't sound, like, exploitive in any way. Because, mm -hmm. like, they they have to really work to pump out any more than that if you're dealing with your personal friend's problems. Mm hmm Cool. Yeah. Very, very, like, it's just about the human experience, you know? We need more You about can relate it. to a lot of them. What about you, Calvin? Uh. Bring us home. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess then I would go with, um, I don't know, I'm kind of trying to decide between two. Um, I guess they're kind of the same. One led to the other. I was, I've was i been listening to um, a lot of uh, Frank Sinatra at work. So I've been playing, listening to a bunch of his stuff, which has been fun. But um, listening to some of those songs made me go back and watch the uh, Ocean's Eleven movie, which is good. I gotta watch the original, because that actually has Frank Sinatra in it. Huh. Mm -hmm. I've only seen the, like, 2000, the remake from, like, 2000 and what, like, three or four? George Clooney did the remake, right? Yeah, it's got a great cast. It's got George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, uh, other fun. people. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, because I saw today I learned on Reddit about that, that, um, who's the actress... There was an actress that he got in the movie, but in eleven, yeah. Um. Oh, what's her name? Julia Roberts. Julia, Julia Roberts, Roberts. Yeah, he got Julia Roberts for it, but at the time she was only doing movies for like twenty million dollars, and but Clooney didn't have that kind of money, so he sent her the script with a twenty dollar bill attached and said, "I heard you're only doing movies for twenties." <laughs> nice. She, she took the role. Uh, obviously oh it's it's funny because oceans 11 at the very least is a movie that uh like even some of the more like cynical film people i've talked to seem to enjoy it it's something that everyone just you can't help but kind of like smile at it, like it the remake a, yeah i like the remake i haven't seen the original either like I, I haven't seen the rat pack one i've seen the first two i've seen the, the first two remakes i haven't seen oceans 13 you know, I like Ocean's 11 and 13. I know, I'm not watching Ocean's 8. <laughs> but they're all hard, watch... hardworking former spy moms. I might watch Ocean's 8. I mean, I watched uh, the 2016 Ghostbusters, and it wasn't, like, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad either. Like, it was just kind of an average, it... like, summer movie. Yeah. And I don't like any of those actresses like all of them are pretty funny or at least compelling in their own in their own way like even leslie jones a lot of people actually said that leslie jones was like the best part of that movie who was um, the um uh, who's the crazy one in that movie kate mckinnon yeah kate mckinnon was great kate mckinnon and chris um Stenwig. no chris hemsworth made that chris movie Hemsworth. for me I, I no disrespect to any of their actresses in it but it, it i just they none of the rest of them clicked for me. 
hard for me. Like I like Melissa McCarthy. I think she has to do very specific roles. Like I, I think she can actually be very entertaining to watch, but if she's just trying to be like the female Chris Farley or Jim Belushi, like it doesn't work. Oh my, um, th- that's yeah. yeah. That perfectly like, encapsulates why I didn't like her in that role because it, it was just like trying too hard for that physical humor. Yeah, she's got a... She can play, like, some really endearing characters pretty well. But if she tries to go, like, too over the top, it just gets, like, fading. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I I agree with Cal. I think everyone should watch Ocean's Eleven. And uh, well, I want to see Ocean's... The original as well, for sure. Yeah. I've been meaning to watch Ocean's Eleven for forever. You should do it. It's on Netflix. Netflix. Well, yeah. there's my weekend. But- you gotta watch 11, 12, and 13, I believe, for all on Netflix. Oh. Damn. Damn. Nice. Only I hadn't deleted my Netflix. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> oh, whatever. So, Calvin, I've, I've got a question that you might be able to contribute to a little bit, but not sure. specifically. Because you don't drink soda. No. Um, But why are there no soft drink variety packs? Like, there's variety chip packs, but why why aren't there soft drink variety packs? Like it's a twelve pack like, of twelve pack of drinks, but you got like four different drinks. I feel like I've seen that. Well, there's there's a thing for alcoholic beverages where you can build your own six pack. <laughs> so I guess just do that, but with soda bottles. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. What if you what if you walked up to the counter with one of those build your own six packs boxes just filled with Plastic soda bottles. <laughs> I kind of want to do that now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure they'd look at you and say, um, it's for beer only. But Listeners, your assignment this week is to go to your local grocery store, grab one of those six-pack boxes, and bring six bottles of soda up to the uh, checkout and see what they say, and then write back to us about your experience. And hard soda doesn't count. All right. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't my program shutting down. Okay. <sighs> so how about the fact that our president refuses to acknowledge the election? Man, he's that's just a bunch of hot air. I, just a bunch of wind. It's not <laughs> like we didn't see it coming. So I mean, there's some weird shit that's gone on with the polls, but I think at this point, it's like you're gonna say save- what. Wait, wait, genuinely, I'm asking, like, what? Because I have seen, like, no actual evidence, just a lot of talk. <laughs> uh, I, I, mean, I I do have one thing. I'm trying to remember if it was North Carolina or Georgia. As they were doing recounts, they did find, like, 3,000 more votes. 3,039. But that's, like, the only thing I've got out of all of the talk that's going on. There's more to just, like, the fact that... Uh those the dominion voting machines have been tied to people within like the democratic party like nancy pelosi holds a stake in that company Um, i'm sure many republicans do but that's the thing too is like so that's my issue with that debate is like i don't think i i don't like the debate as it stands right now where it's like either it's all fraudulent or none of it's fraudulent like i think issue is that even if let's say fraud was proven it's like how could you prove that those fraudulent claims weren't fraudulent themselves in and of themselves you know what i mean like we're at a point right now where no matter what anybody says in the national dialogue somebody is going to try and like debunk it and say like well technically no blah 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 like i don't i don't think he won i think he came way closer than a lot of people expected which is why that like a lot of people in the democratic establishment are melting down and now like blaming shit on people like AOC. Cause they're like, well, you know, it's actually the progressive like rung of the party. That's really fucked us for the past four years. And it's like, ah, I don't know about that, Nancy. Like, you, <laughs> really got a great job. you might, you might want to look at your fucking strategy. Like, um, cause those progressives are younger. They're going to outlive you Pelosi. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. I do. F- like, I, I rarely have sympathy for AOC, but I do feel bad for her right now because it's very clear that like, the larger Democratic Party is trying to move the 
closer to center. I would <laughs> feel bad for her. But she also made some statements that sounded very much like making a list of your political enemies. Oh, exactly. of that. Yeah, which, like, shitty. I've heard people on the right, though, saying, like, there. I mean, there's the whole meme on, like, far right stuff. Of, like, the day of the rope. Like, once we get into power, like, we're going to, you know. And that, that's power. that's BS, too. That That's not appropriate. Mm-hmm. But it, it just makes it very hard for me to feel sympathy when you also go and do things like that. Well, you can be a socialist and not be extreme. I mean, that's that's not like I don't understand why certain parts of like socialism are are like taken immediately as extremist positions. I mean, I know that they're related immediately to like, ironically enough, to communism, even though they share more in common with Nazism, just based on like the name itself. Um, yeah, but. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <clears throat> I, I I agree with, I think this past eight months has definitely shown that there are parts of the American system that need a Work. severe overhaul in terms of public welfare. And I don't mean that in like the slur sense, but I mean it in a genuine, like, th- this country needs a safety net, not for specific people, for everybody. There needs to be something in place. So if something like this happens, people are taken care of. I mean, I've been talking with for my job talking with local business owners the past month and now with Michigan like going uh into like essentially a lockdown again or like a quasi one a lot of places are California did the next three weeks I was talking to a local business owner like uh I've talked to a few who said they're gonna lose close to like 100k Mm -hmm. in three weeks I mean some of these people have staff of close to 50 um, and they're going to be laying off like 80% of those people. Not laying off, but they're not going to be working. And there's no safety net. There's no help for anybody. Um, so I- I've been like, you know, I've rankled before at the whole like, uh, like, well, we need, you know, public trust funds and we need stuff like that. Like I've been someone who's been a little bit anti-socialist measures for various reasons. But I think right now the whole the whole idea of like, no, like get the government out, like, I don't know. All that's really happened in place of the state taking over people's lives is like corporations have. And I know that sounds very hippy dippy, but it's pretty fucking true. Like, yeah, and that's I I would definitely be well uh, the words I want. Come on. There was that a uh, Google antitrust thing that's been kind of picking up some steam recently. Phone yeah. no, stop. <laughs> the Google heard you. <laughs> Google is retaliating. <laughs> If the feed cuts out, you know why. Um, <laughs> which, funny. like, I... As much as I have generally leaned more towards, like, state government power over federal, I do think that there needs to be some step-in of uh, trust-busting. Not, oh, yeah. Is that the right word? No. Oh, that's that's the right word. Is it? No. For, for, yeah, for them, yeah. trust. But I mean, that was what Teddy Roosevelt did back in the early 1900s. That's what it was called. Yeah. Calvin, it I, sounded like you were going to say something. Yeah. Did I? I oh, don't remember. Okay. When was this? Well, just before I started to talk. Oh. <laughs> I agree, though. I've been watching, like, Jack, some of the Jack Dorsey shit with Twitter. Something about that guy. Just fuck it. I just don't like him. I don't know what yeah. it is. I don't know if it's because I don't like Twitter. But it's like, it's either, like, he seems like he's so cashed out like just so done with it that he just doesn't have the energy to both make any severe modifications to Twitter's policy and also answer like battery of government questions at the same time. Um, or he just like quite frankly doesn't care. Um, but I do think those social media companies need to be like regulated to some degree. I don't think state regulation is it's like, true. I don't know how I feel about that because, like, I don't disagree on that because, like, for, I do believe freedom of speech is, like, all like really important and all that stuff. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of people on the right, like, for years, for years, they were talking about, like, how they were so – they were all about freedom of speech. You say whatever you want and all this stuff and, like – um, they were go- they were attacking the left and saying like oh you're silencing freedom of speech 
um, and people's and individuals' rights that um, a lot of uh, policies were in, um, ones that come to mind were like the incident of like the baker. This is a little bit of an aside, but like the yeah, baker yeah. that refused the bake a cake for a gay wedding because they're like, oh, it's against my rights. Um, and they were all like, oh, you can't force individuals and companies to um, conform to like these uh, pol- these like extreme policies or these left policies as they were calling them. But then as soon as that kind of happens to them, mm-hmm. they're like, Pah! what? We got to get in. You're like, how dare you? We shut down the, the like, uh, how dare a private entity like regulate our speech on their oh. private forum? Yes, uh, because that's current. what they are. I like, I, I don't necessarily agree that you, you that because of their prevalence that that just nece- necessarily means they are open to public rule i i don't know or like the regulation and stuff like that i don't know if i agree with that because at the end of the day they are a private company like why do you get to determine what they're allowing on their platform if you it's don't like not- it that's the benefit of the free market is that you're supposed to drive away and i read and i realized that the flaw in that argument is that these social media companies are so large that they force out any other competition and they become a monopoly and all this stuff but i felt like a lot of people on the right didn't have a problem with this until it kind of started hitting them no and but that's a, on yeah. top of that there's that new like parlay app social media platform parlor, parlor. which is parlor yeah okay i've saw no something where comment is. where it's like it's a french word the parlor oh, so parlor okay. whatever okay. point it's is it's like the it's the unconjugated um it's misspelled but it's the unconjugated verb to talk Jurassic uh, french okay. well that new one is out and <laughs> was like oh conservatives come over to this app where we'll be free to speak our minds and now liberal views over there are getting shut down banned etc it's like okay guys oh, yeah. Well, no, and that's the problem with like both. I think the left and the right right now is that they hate corporations until the corporations work for them, and yeah. they love corporations until the corporations don't work for them. It's kind of like like the right's policies on free speech, in my opinion, are kind of like the left's uh, policies on immigration. It's like I think Jeff Bezos wants more immigration because he genuinely believes in giving people better lives in this country. <laughs> no, <laughs> that motherfucker wants to import people from third world countries that he can pay like less than minimum wage to work in his fucking factories. That guy, does, he, like I'm not saying Jeff Bezos is a bad guy, but mm. if you think that it's like this altruistic, like, like Tony Stark superhero, you're out of your fucking mind. Like does he's running. Think that? I've seen a lot I mean, of people on the left. I don't know. know. That's on yet. But that's the thing is, they let him get away with it. <laughs> like someone, uh, someone somewhere has to have a decent opinion of Jeff Bezos, or else he would have been stopped. Like I don't know, I, man. I, He's got the money that it just doesn't matter anymore. And that's the problem too. Is like capital shouldn't govern worth. John, what were you gonna say? <laughs> yeah. Well, just like in the in the case of Amazon, kind of specifically, it it's about jobs. Like, it's just so many jobs that they can get into places. Exactly. Like people will give them tax cuts or incentives mm. to come. That's you see, they point. started a uh, uh, prescription drug service. Ah, oh, damn it. Amazon, no. <laughs> oh, Amazon I... did. That's smart. It's okay. evil. That's I gotta give it to them. They're, they're smart. They know what no. to invest in and what to capitalize on. I mean, that makes them like the the that would make them the leader in some of the most modern industries like streaming, shipping, pharmaceuticals. The so internet that. runs on AWS. Groceries, yeah, <laughs> hosting half the internet. <laughs> and it, back in Roosevelt's day, this would have gotten broken up because he's gone wide instead of tall. It should, have. dude. They fucking Amazon has been contracted by the CIA to build intelligence networks. Mm. Fuck, dude. Uh, like, I don't. Dude. I, I, I don't know that that's anything like to freak out about. They, the CIA is just going to contract anyone that's capable of doing it. No, no I don't. Size. <laughs> it's, just like, it's just creepy. It's like, oh, the oh, same place fair. that I'm, I'm getting my books, like my textbooks from, is also like setting up, you know, <laughs> intelligence networks to hold <laughs> governments in South America. It's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> you know, maybe. I don't the know. Same it's, place that has smart speakers in your. In our homes. Yeah. <laughs> that too. That yeah. too. That's, yeah. 
How you doing so, there, Cooper? <laughs> my phone is yeah. watching me. Well, it's like that comment I heard on, I, I want to say this is the Rooster Teeth podcast. I think it was Bernie was talking about it. In the book, 1984, the dude has one speaker, not even a camera, one speaker and microphone in his apartment. And it like rules his life. It like, it like the downfall of society and all this stuff. We carry a GPS locating service, a camera, a microphone, like all that on our person everywhere we go voluntarily. Yep. Here's the here's a question though, because this made me think of it. But what do you think is the worst future, 1984 or Brave New World? They're both bad in their own ways. Uh, future. 1984 is worse because at least in Brave New, as crappy as Brave New World is, as horrendous as it is, awful as it is, there is. If I'm remembering correctly, some measure where like those top level people who don't conform, or they're like, "All right, we knew there was going to be this group of you who just don't fit." <laughs> so here's just, your colony where you can go do your thing and be happy. Yeah, 1984 is definitely the worst because 1984 is more of an op- an oppressive dystopian future, whereas Brave New World is um, more of like a delusional dystopian future where everyone is happy in brave new world they just don't understand what they're missing so they're 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 just everyone's ignorant in brave new world um but but they have comparatively to uh 1984 they have way more freedom see unless you're a delta (laughs) but even then like the deltas don't real like as as horrendous and awful as it is the deltas don't realize they're deltas but that's the I see that's what makes Brave New World so horrifying to me is that in 1984 you have the conception that there's there's a dissonance of thought. There are people I forget the main character's name. Is it like Michael or something? It's Winston. Winston. I think. Um, or Watson. I don't yeah. remember anyone. I think, I think it's Winston. I never I think it is read Winston. it. You get the sense that people mm-hmm. like Winston, there's a dissonance there. Like they're still they're just functioning under this system. They might not agree with it, but they go along with it. But the difference with between that and Brave New World is like in Brave New World, it's like nobody has any choice from birth until death as to what they think. You don't get, you don't get a choice. You get a pill. That's right. it. Like you're locked out of meaning and truth and genuine, authentic living. There's no chance. Um Winston in the oppressive not uh, like 1984 has his like diary or his notebook that he writes in. He's at least allowed or allows himself like some kind of authentic thought. But in 1984, uh, Brave New World doesn't fucking exist. Like it's it's just not allowed. There is the reservation with like people who think different. But um, th- I mean, one of the biggest I think differences between those two is like in Brave New World, you are modified and selected like before you're born. Like mm-hmm. yeah. Organic birth isn't a thing anymore. You're picked. Like there is no natural chance that's allowed. It's all predetermined. Um, but there's not much the- chance. There's not like chance in 80, 1984 either, though. I I argue there's more of a human element where it's like they're functioning under an oppressive system that does have control of minds and masses, but not like fundamental biology or the soul of people um because that's the thing in 1984 which makes it so like kind of obvious and almost i'd argue at times weaker than brave new world is it's clearly an oppressive system difficulty yeah, I, with like, brave new world is like you're like well they're happy right i mean what's the yeah. problem what do you think that's John? The- i don't the subtext i always got from um 1984 was i don't know if most of the world knew it was an oppressive system I think like only people within the party really knew what was going on, and oh, everyday yeah. people just kind of viewed the world through the news, yeah. like we do today. That's an intro. Yeah, that's fair. Because yeah, you are really only given that lens of the main character there, who's kind of like, wow, wait a minute, this is kind of sucky. <laughs> I, yeah. I think we could totally be living in a 1984 world right now. I and think it's just like the people yes. that are closer to the systems of power are the ones who live lives like Winston. Who I have mean, to be I careful can... what they say, who have, like are mm-hmm. actually on the quote unquote on the run or like in trouble for their thoughts. Whereas like, uh, Snowden and Epstein? 
Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like the random plebs like you and me, we're just, oh, there's a war going on over there. Let's rally patriotism around that, you know? Well, and that's the thing though too now is like who's gonna fucking I mean, it was one thing in our in Iraq, you know, when it had been almost a thirty year difference between last major U.S. war and then the uh, the Iraq war. Like now, unless we were actually going to war with mainland China, which bookmark this five years, <laughs> less, <laughs> unless we're actually going to war with somewhere someone like China or like Saudi Arabia or whatever, there's no way. There's no way you could build up American morale going to another war that most people beyond like the most extreme would support. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I think the, you just need one more 9-11 level event and it, it won't be a lasting, but it'll be enough to get us in, which is what happened with Iraq. I think I it's the mean, return. Well, well, no, the, the, the thing about the wars in 1984 where they were like set up to never be over. Yeah. Like we have been in the Middle East as a country for almost 20 years now. Oh, More and than... not even not even counting the Gulf War. Or like right. Yeah, and it's right. like just a background part of life, you know? And that's mm. kind of like it's happening. Yeah. Um, mm. That's like that's the sense I got from the world in the background. Like, okay, this is happening. It separates us from them. Yes, yeah, like, keep. Uh, the hope that I that I would see more in 1984 than Brave New World would be the idea that there are more people like Winston who are like dissonant and, and haven't been affected by any kind of conditioning. Um, but you also got to remember, sorry, spoiler alert, that like a lot of the resistance that Winston meets are like controlled opposition, that they're working for the party yeah. and that he basically gets set up. Um, so that's the question then is like, are there, is it even worth it in a system like that that is going to feed you certain lies, um, which are actually truths to a, to a degree, just to get you to admit that the lie is true and then forget everything else? Um, yeah. That is one thing Brave New World, the world of Brave New World has over 1984, is that the dissidents in Brave New World, the worst thing that happens is they get shipped off to another, like just their own private island with a bunch of other dissidents. That's also you know, true. Like yeah, 1984, they're executed or re-educated. <laughs> Although, I think we should, it's worth noting that in Brave New World, we're told, like, oh yeah, you guys get to go do your thing over there. We don't know how well it's functional over there. Yeah. That's but true. I do think that, like, if I could point out two big differences, or a difference between the two would be, like, 1984 is more about, like, ideological tyranny than... Uh, Brave New World is more like biological tyranny. It's like the the two biggest fears of the 20th century, like um, whether it was eugenics or Nazism or communism or all those other things. It's like, how is man going to cope with these new ways of organizing people and then organizing his own like physical construction? I think there's a lot of societal in Brave New World as well. <laughs> There is, but I, 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 think, I think why both. the distinction yeah. was made between uh, ideological and biological is because they're so, so social in both. Yeah, I, I would say because like with uh, with like Brave New World, that more the social stuff immediately stems from biological like altering, whether it's that's, not, that's fair. There's no organic sex. Um, there's pills like all that other shit, whereas 1984 is more like, you know, what if an ideology that was essentially a mesh of, like, Stalinism and Nazism got into power and people just kind of... Man, this is... This is a lot deeper than I thought we'd go. <laughs> <Sorry about that. laughs> no, no, it, it was an interesting talk. It's, yeah, it's good fun. to get a little philosophical like that. It was fun. I really um, wish somebody still had to go for the media recommendation so we could just transition over to that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, so Calvin, what do you recommend? <laughs> I, was, I, I did have two things to bring up at some point before we got to the end. We're getting a little close. Well, um, we're definitely almost there. <laughs> first off, there's been no reports on our uh, Better Buddies icebreaker from last week. To, uh, mints or gum? No, no one's oh. replied to that. Can um, I reply now? You, you yeah, may. Gum. 
gum. Yeah. I hate mint. Uh, suck it, James. Damn. <laughs> the democracy. I am upset. The democracy oh. shall reign. And second, we got our uh, we got our OG Fantastic Four here tonight. Oh shit! Oh damn, son, you're right. Yeah. This is the middle school crew. I just thought that was neat. Yeah, that's oh, speak to know that. Halo MCCPC added crossplay, James. So yes, <laughs> I can play me right now. Yeah, let's go that's wreck some boys fun. on firefight. All uh, right, dude. If you guys want to hop on like Friday, I'll be totally free. <sighs> Man, I just got a stream. <sighs> Hold on, I gotta take a pee. <laughs> Quick, someone play elevator music. This is not going to sync up. <laughs> James is peeing. Oh, James. I oh, cut it out, but now we have the elevator music. MCC came out. Do we, is, are we in a new season yet? Yep, season yes. four. What are, we, uh, what are we looking at for that? Halo 4. Uh, but like, uh, is it just sk- more skins, skins and stuff, or we got armor, or what? Most likely. I think there's some Halo Reach stuff in there. They talked about adding in a new helmet. Ooh. Oh yeah, some of the cut, cut content from the original yeah. release of Reach is back in now. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Hey, That's look who's back from his piss. It's interesting how neat that is. Nice. 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 The blonde? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh, you mean, you mean the ugly one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but she's ugly, right? Oh, no, she's she's pretty attractive. Nice. My lord <laughs> told me otherwise. <laughs> it's just a book. <laughs> just a book. I want to recommend that video. Oh, that was yeah. great. <laughs> He's just using a soundboard, right? Yeah, he is. I do. Based off that, I would also like to uh, sub recommend um, the Stone Mountain sixty four series. That one is classic. As remember that one? No, no. As far as the guy who would play, like I think it was like Battlefield, but he'd be like super into yes. it. Yes, yes, get, like, yes. I didn't read that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's awesome. That guy's that great. is awesome. <laughs> uh, in that same tangent. Did you guys watch the uh, AH animated soup store I sent you? I sent to the group yes. chat. Mm, no, it, it's just the uh, Code Geass abridged soup store bit, but with uh, the AH animated guys. I didn't realize that was from one of their series. It's no. not. That's never mind. It was just someone something a fan yeah. did because they thought the models would fit well with the care with the people and the okay. dialogue. Did you hit both the things you wanted to hit, RJ? Yes. I yes, okay. I did. We can, we can wrap this up. Thanks for being here, fellas. It was a, it was a real good time. I was. No uh, advice for any of you this week. Fuck you. I feel like there was advice in our discussion. You didn't Sorry. respond to our icebreaker, so no advice for you. Yeah. <laughs> if, you <laughs> want, <laughs> if you want advice, respond to our icebreakers. Uh, yeah. If you want to let us know what you think your favorite Greek god is, you might be wrong, uh, on our social media platforms, Facebook, Better Buddies, on Twitter, at Better Budcast, use the hashtag Better Buddies, and the hashtag Favorite Greek God. Uh, we have an email, betterbuddiescast at gmail.com. If you need advice, fan art, hate mail, a uh, declaration of love read out online, uh, Declaration of War. Declaration of War, we can do that. Can I ask, um, what do you think the odds of a Declaration of Love are? Seven. Oh! There you go. That's That's like 700%. That's good luck. Well, that's that's of course over the course of the next decade, so. Oh. (laughs) Uh, thank you to the band Problem of Interest for letting us use their song Living in the Moment off the album Cross Off Yesterday. That's on iTunes and Spotify. We're on iTunes and Spotify. Go follow and like us and do whatever. Reminder that our goal right now is to get a hundred downloads on a single episode. And I'm I'm making a caveat here. That's one of the more 
recent episodes, not the first episode, because that one's already at 50, that's cheating. Um, but if we get 100 downloads on an episode, we will review gum. Yes, we will. It's going to be a juicy episode, everyone. Just a whole <laughs> lot of mukbang. Oh, we're going to chew that's on the air? That sounds nightmare. awful. <laughs> <laughs> We we can we can mute ourselves to chew, but I think I think we have to be like everybody on this like flavor at the same time so we get initial results. You said that, Calvin? Yeah. <laughs> Dang it, James. Sorry. <laughs> and last but not least, be a better buddy. Hey. I am James. Hello. Hello. Surprise, it's a John. It's James. Are you pleasantly (laughs) surprised, Kelvin? What? Uh, that John is here. Was he not supposed to be? Well, I told you it'd be you and James, and then I thought, oh, it'd be be sneaky if I invited John, too. Oh, I saw him coming. His... Discord thing lit up, and no game popped up. I could have just turned on my computer. Sherlock Holmes over here. Down. We got a power user over here. (laughs) Calvin, you're being a little sus.